Well, everyone is waiting on pins and needles to find out who won the election, what the candidates are saying as we wait on the results from some major battleground states. Yeah, I'm live in one of those major battleground states, Michigan, and we are getting some new information from the Secretary of State. I'll have an update coming up. Welcome to WTOL 11 News at Noon. I'm Amanda Fay. We're going to get to all of your election results in just a moment. But first, a quick check of your first alert forecast. John, we are at the start of a warm up. How long is it going to last? It's going to last until the weekend. Amanda, not a cloud in the sky. Our fifth third bank camera shows you bright sunshine. That'll be the story for the next couple days as we look at that first alert forecast featuring plenty of sun and you can enjoy that blue sky really until the weekend. We are looking at high temperatures in the low 70s for the next several days, which is well above normal. Average high for this time of year is in the mid 50s. We will be well surpassing that at least for the foreseeable future and also a dry and sunny weather pattern. Stick around for that full 10 day forecast. I'll let you know when some cooler weather arrives and also how long we stay dry and sunny for coming up in just a minute amanda john thank you all eyes remain on the white house as still no clear winner has been determined in the race for the president well here's a look at how the candidates stand with the electoral college map these results just coming in within the the last few minutes the latest update uh, joe biden is still leading the electoral vote count right now with 238 the president with 213 and as you can see there are some states that are shaded in white or gray those are some key battleground states that we are still waiting for results to come in. Those states include Michigan and Pennsylvania. They remain undecided right now. And new information coming into the newsroom right now about Michigan. It appears as though Joe Biden now has an edge. The Secretary of State providing an update within the past hour. WTOA 11's Kaylee Kirby is live in Michigan right now. And Kaylee, what do we know as all eyes are on the Wolverine state? Yeah, Amanda, as of right now, Michigan has not been called for either candidate yet. We do know that Michigan is a key state for both Biden and President Trump in winning this year's presidential election. Now, according to the Associated Press, the state is at 96% reporting, but there are still tens of thousands of ballots that need to be counted. Michigan Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson just wrapped up an update on the vote counting process. She says as of right now, absentee ballots are what needs to be counted, and those are in some of Michigan's largest districts, including Detroit and Grand Rapids. Poll workers have been counting ballots throughout the night, according to Benson, to make sure that results are accurate. Here's what she said just minutes ago on waiting to hear results from the state. We're focused on counting every single ballot. That's our focus. Every single valid ballot in Michigan will be counted. And importantly, also right now, there are tens of thousands of ballots that still need to be counted. During Benson added that more Michigan voters have voted in this year's election and then in any election before now stick with us as we continue to follow what happens in the state we will be providing updates online and on air throughout the day and have a live update later on this evening reporting live in Monroe Kaylee Kirby WTOL 11. Kaylee, thank you. The 2020 presidential election was predicted to be close, and it is. Votes still being counted, and it may be days before we know who will be the next president of the United States of America. Skylar Henry has more. The vote counting continues today and could keep going for several more days as battleground states process a record-setting amount of votes. That's what normally happens in elections. People vote. We count the votes and we and then there's a there's a winner and there's a, a loser. Democratic nominee Joe Biden has pulled ahead in the upper Midwest states of Wisconsin and Michigan. Joe Biden is on track to win this election and he will be the next president of the United States. While Pennsylvania still has about a million votes left to be counted, many of them in Democratic friendly areas. Pennsylvania is the real key here. I think Pennsylvania could take a couple more days to count all of those ballots. A lot of them are coming from the from Philadelphia and the suburbs of Philadelphia. While election officials are calling for patience, President Trump is calling for a halt to the vote counting. The president tweeted this morning, last night I was leading, often solidly in many key states, then one by one they started to magically disappear as surprise ballot dumps were counted. Very strange. Last night, he said he would fight the vote counts. We'll be going to the U.S. Supreme Court. We want all voting to stop. The Biden campaign responded, saying if the president makes good on his threat to go to court to try to prevent the proper tabulation of votes, 
we have legal teams standing by, ready to deploy to resist that effort. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. Well, television networks around the world are glued to the U.S. presidential election and waiting anxiously, like the rest of us, for the results. Underscoring how pivotal the world sees the U.S. election, the hashtags Trump, Biden, and U.S. Elections 2020 are trending across Europe and around the globe. A presidential election doesn't just determine who will lead the United States. For America's allies, it selects their partner for the next four years. The UK-US relationship is in great shape and we're confident that it will go from strength to strength. Meanwhile, America's rivals like China, Iran and Russia also have an interest in how the results play out and what relations will look like going forward. Well, we have team coverage of local races this afternoon. Ariel Onstott starts in Lucas County with a look at what voters approved. Unofficial election results right here in Lucas County show all 18 ballot measures passing. Now those results still have to be certified by the Board of Elections, but if we take a look at the Lucas County Board of Elections website, it shows all 312 precincts reporting results, and that includes all absentee ballots being counted as well. Nearly 200,000 ballots were cast countywide, and nearly 300,000 voters are registered within Lucas County. This puts voter turnout at nearly 66%. We'll continue to keep you updated as we await the certification of those results. Reporting, I'm Ariel Onstott, WTOL 11. Toledo voters had two separate income tax initiatives to consider when voting. Issue three is a three quarter percent income tax renewal. And here are a look at the results there. A voter said yes to this by 59%. That tax will continue providing services for police and fire. There's also issue four. This was a new tax, an additional quarter percent tax that would go strictly to repairing city roads. It's a tax that had been previously voted down, but it appears that voters gave the support this go around 54% of the vote. Our team coverage continues now from Wood County where the unofficial ballot results are in. Let's get to Michelle Backus for a breakdown. The unofficial election results for Wood County are coming in. The county released them last night roughly around 1022. Many people I spoke with around the Perrysburg area say they just want to know the final results, and that includes the president of the United States. Let's take a look at some of the polls we know right now from Wood County. The race for Wood County Sheriff unofficial results are 36.81% for Ruth Babel Smith, 63.19% for Mark Vosilishin. Vosilishin has been serving for 15 years. If reelected, he says he plans to build on the progress he's already made. Unofficial results for a countywide issue, issue 19, the Wood County District Public Library renewal. 73.2% are for the tax levy, 26.8% are against the tax levy. This is a 0.8 mil levy. It will last six years and covers 40% of the system's budget. If this officially passes, the levy will cost the owner of a $100,000 home $29.29 per year. Another issue gaining a lot of attention in the county is issue 46, a 1.9 mil permanent improvement levy renewal for the Perrysburg School District. Unofficial results for this issue are 65.03% for the tax levy, 34.97% against the tax levy. According to the district superintendent, this will cost the owner of a $200,000 home roughly $9 per month. The money will be used for permanent maintenance issues, and this levy first passed back in 1980. And in terms of the presidency, Donald Trump is leading over Joe Biden here in Wood County, 53 to 45%. Again, those are the unofficial election results. So far, there's still no telling if Wood County is going to continue its reputation as a bellwether county. Reporting in Perrysburg, Michelle Backus, WTOL 11. Well, Genoa City Schools responding this afternoon after voters support one levy, but not another. The first was a renewal. It was first passed in 2005, and it again passed uh, this year by 61% of the vote. However, a second levy, uh, this one was for new money. It did not pass. The superintendent says that money is needed as the district has not received an increase in state funding in over six years. So while the cost of the operating the district, of course, continues to rise. So you can see there it was voted down with 50 58% of the vote and in a statement this afternoon, the superintendent said, quote, while we are grateful for our renewal levy passing, the reality is that we will have to continue pursuing additional funding. We will put more. We will 
more than likely be putting another levy on the ballot in May unless something drastically changes between now and then with how the state of Ohio funds public schools. Finley City school leaders are back to making tough financial decisions after voters decided against its school levy. Finley School Superintendent Troy Ross says he's disappoint disappointed, but today is a new day and they'll get back to work. We need to take a look at our five-year forecast and, and take a look at where we are financially, but uh, there will be some significant reductions for potentially next for next school year. Correct. Okay. You know, we'll, we'll still any any uh, reductions we can make currently. The we'll, we'll look at those, but the majority of those cuts will come in the 21-22 school year. A Democrat incumbent, Katie Moline, will stay on Toledo City Council. Moline stepped up to fill the spot when Sandy Spang took a job with Mayor Wade Capsacavage's office. Challenger Tony Dia jumped into the race after a gunman killed his son, Toledo Police Officer Anthony Dia, in July. Candidate Dia says he has no hard feelings, and in a statement on Twitter, he said, I would like to thank all my supporters that stood by me through this city council race. I really appreciate all the love and support. God bless you all. He also thanked everyone for the love and support they showed his family after the loss of his son. Well, of course, it's just a very small sampling of the results that we have come in at this time, but we have you covered when it comes to re the results from Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan, and of course, the race for the White House. In fact, former Vice President Joe Biden is expected to speak today, possibly as early as one o'clock this afternoon. So stay informed here on the air and online or get a full breakdown by texting the word election to 419-248-1100.